Good morning, everybody. This is the set of notes we're going to create today. Um, if you follow along, we'll step through this one by one. Um, our goal is to look into the flowers, all the different flowers of the world, some of the basic anatomy um, and physiology involved. Um, remember, flowers are for our angiospermophyta, our angiosperms. All of our plants that, although they don't always show them, do make flowers at some point in their life cycle for sexual reproduction. Um, whether you've got your succulents, your air plants, your epiphytes um, that live on other plants, or some of your traditional trees. Um, still palm, but still still. All right, getting set up. I've got four different color um, markers to create these notes for the four major parts of the plant um, flower. So, first super quick um, reminder of our shoot apical meristem. Makes those primordial leaves, um, which will eventually develop into full leaves. Key part here was we sh said that the shoot apical meristem um, contains the stem cells, those undifferentiated um, cells um, within a plant. Undifferentiated cells. So they're not bound to their fate, they have not specialized yet. Um, given the correct conditions, that shoot apical meristem will stop its growth of new leaves and new stem and will become a flower. And those conditions, some of the major ones the IB wants you to know about, um, are the photo period, uh, the periods of light and the periods of dark. So if light and dark periods are just right, a flower will form. This flower is going to be a dead end um, for the stem. It will produce no more leaves, no more stem from this um, shoot apical meristem. It is a dead end. Um, we'll call this a determinate axis. And often they'll simplify this in a drawing to show you the axis, what will remain of the stem. And they'll show you four whorls of modified leaves. Whorls because they whirl around the stem. So four whorls, so I'm going to put these four sets of, right now, what just look like leaves. Um, but we'll draw a more modified version later to show you their functions, what they look like on the stem. So four whorls. These are leaves modified for, really, for pollination. and fertilization. And for sexual reproduction, um, passing a pollen from flower to flower. All right, the four whorls we see here, your bottom uh, whorl are called sepals or sepals. These really are for protection. Um, they are often green. Um, they're still photosynthetic, and they are the bud of the newly developing flower. They're the green where you're like, okay, the flower hasn't opened yet. Um, all I see are these green coverings. Those are your sepals. They lose their function once the flower's open. Their job's done. Once the flower opens, you see the next whorl up. And these are what you normally know of as your petals. Right? The thing you think about when you think of a flower. Um, but what I want you to change your idea of um, is they're not for us to be pretty. They really are advertising for pollinate, pollinators. Advertise. Um, they are to say, hey, pollinators, this flower's ready for you to come visit. Next layer up are the stamens. Or stay men. You see the word men in there. These are the male reproductive organs. Uh, which 
will create that pollen. Next level up are carpels. Carpel or carpels, depending. Um, and these are your female reproductive organs. Um, if a flower is complete, it'll have male and female petal and sepals. Um, if it has all four whorls, we would also say it's hermaphroditic. Um, it contains male and female organs. Often the plant will have some protection to make sure it doesn't self-fertilize. Often that is not an ideal situation, um, but could be last resort. Um, so let's draw a flower over here. Go from this basic drawing to a little bit more pretty one. Um, I'm going to draw the end of the stem and the development of the petals. Uh, sorry, not petals. Uh, sepals. Sepals or sepals. Sepal. Alright, those were the still green photosynthetic that will remain closed around the developing flower until it's ready in which it will unfurl, revealing your colorful portion of the flower. Um, some kind of color depends on the pollinator it's attempting to attract. Um, often yellow is used to, uh, to attract bees, and bees like that yellow color. Uh, white is often for nighttime pollinators because it's more easily seen in the dark. Um, with limited color um, available. Petal. Remember, colorful. Colorful advertisements. The next piece here, let's move into the male. So we're going to get these stamens developed. So next whirl up, if the flower has male portions will be this structure. I'm drawing what would be classically seen on like a lily. Um, these will look different to, from flower to flower, species to species. Um, I'm trying, trying to draw that like classic lily looking stamen. Alright, so this blue structure is your stamen. Remember, men, male. Alright, what do we see within this? Well, you've got this structure on the top, uh, which is called your anther. And this makes pollen. And pollen contains sperm. Um, it is not uh, the same way we think of as sperm in the animal kingdom, but for all intents and purposes, um, the nuclei that are in there are sperm. The other component in here um, is what's lifting it away, getting it away from the um, end of the stem so that a pollinator can come get some pollen from the anther. And that's your filament. Its only function is just to lift the pollen away um, so it can get covered all over a pollinator. Mail done. Last component, last whirl. I'm going to get purple going here for carpal. Um, usually it's got a swollen bottom, um, making it a little more drastic than really it probably is. Um, and then it's got an elevating piece. Usually the goal is to elevate above, if it's a complete flower, I elevate above the male um, stamens so that the flower does not self-pollinate uh, and self-fertilize um, with kind of a landing pad on the top. All right, so I'm gonna get still use the color purple up here. Um, can you still see? Yeah, still see. So this is the carpal. 
on the three subcomponents. So first, we've got the landing zone on the top. This is the stigma. Um, I think sticky stigma. Sticky stigma. And if you touch them, especially on a lily, you'll see they're a little tacky, a little sticky. And their function is to collect pollen. Right, if a pollinator comes in, goes for some nectar, potentially also produced on the stigma, it'll be sticky enough that some pollen from a different flower's anther will fall and get trapped on the stigma. Nice landing pad for insects, a nice collection pad, landing pad for the pollen. The next piece up um, is the extension piece away from the base. And that is the style. Right, ladies have style. Silly, but might help. Um, the style, again, it's to raise um, the stigma away from the bottom, um, but furthermore, it's to allow the pollen tube. Um, the pollen actually grows a tube that reaches down to the eggs, so it allows the pollen tube to reach an egg. And the eggs are contained in the lower swollen structure um, called an ovary. Um, so ovary is going to make eggs, egg or eggs, depends develop a seed if it gets fertilized. And then the ovary will swell up to become the fruit. Swell into a fruit. Right, that fruit will contain the seeds that were developed from the eggs they were fertilized by a pollen tube that came down the style from the stigma. That hopefully it was pollen from some other plant's anther that got brought by a pollinator to this flower. Um, that is all I have for you. Um, so remember your four whorls in a complete flower? Carpels, stamens, petals, sepals. Sepals are protection during development. Petals are advertisement when the flower is ready, really when the eggs are receptive and or the pollen is ready for production. Stamen, men for men, males, that's the male uh, reproductive role, and carpels, female reproductive role. Adios, everybody.